Good morning. Welcome to Mud Girl Pottery YouTube videos. Today we are going to trim the beginner two and a half pound bowl that we made yesterday. A lot of people don't realize the different steps that are involved in making pottery. We don't just throw the pottery, we then have to clean up the bottom of it by trimming it and getting rid of this excess in order to make it look like the final product. When is the best time to trim your pots? Well, I really like to do it when it's leather hard, not, you know, soft Italian leather, but more of the Fava sort of Tom McCann leather. So it's hard enough where it doesn't move. The sides of it are pretty stiff and the shape is gonna stay the same. And if you put your finger into here, it won't actually make a dent. So this is when I prefer to trim when it's leather hard. Not when it changes to a white color, but when it's still sort of this dark brown. So um, I do not trim on a bat. I'm gonna move this camera over here. Let's see if we can get ourselves a little bit of a better view. Um, I do not trim on a bat. I trim on the bare wheel because I like to see the circles. When you're a beginner, often the pot may not be round, so the circles will not help you. But when your pots begin to be round, you can use the circles on your wheel to be able to put in the center to start. So first we learn the inside of our pot. If the inside of our pot is round, we want to make sure that the outside of our pot is round. Where does the foot go? The foot should begin where your pot changes direction. So if you can look here, it goes straight here and then all of a sudden it starts to go up. Right here is where I would put the foot of my pot. Now this is the beginner bowl, so I left a lot of clay here to support the sides of the walls. As you get more advanced, all of this clay will end up inside your pot. So I mark off where the outside of my foot is gonna go and then I make a mark for where the inside of my foot is gonna go. I try and keep the same sort of three eighths of an inch for my foot. And then I wanna mark off on the outside where it starts to get thick. So right around here is where my wall is thin and then it starts to sort of thicken up there. So again, I take a look at the inside. We're looking at a smooth slope like that. And I'm gonna put it directly on my wheel. Now, how do I center my pot? Well, first I put it in the center where the circles are and then I draw circles. So I make the wheel move meet pretty fast speed and I'm gonna draw a circle. Now, if that circle is close to even in the middle, then I would say that it's pretty close to centered. See, it's even all the way around where I drew my circle. If your circle was a little off, I would move it towards the shorter side of the circle. Okay, so now what I need to do, now that I've gotten it centered, is I wanna attach it to the wheel. So I take clay that is, um, you know, malleable, flexible, but not too wet. I don't want it too soft because it won't hold the pot. And I don't want it too dry because then it won't stick. So I make these fat coils. I curl them just a little bit. I put them on the side of my pot and hold the top of my pot and I squish down onto those coils. Now, I'm gonna lift up the camera again so I can show you what I mean by squish. See how I squish that down? By squishing them down, the clay goes up and holds the side of your pot. If you squish in, if your pot is a little soft, it will actually squish the side of your pot. So if I do this, usually I would hold the top of my pot and I push down like that. And now the pot is in there pretty well. A little action photos going on here today. I just feel like this gets you a little bit of a closer view to see what I'm doing. All right, so now my pot is in there. What is the first thing I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my big loop tool. I am a, a very basic tool person. This is the big loop tool or trimming tool that comes with um, any of your basic sets for $10. As you get more advanced, you can get ones that don't dull as fast. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go from here to here. Now, how do I hold this? I'm gonna hold it like I'm cutting meat. So my finger can go here, but I'm holding it where my wrist is doing all of the strength, all of the pushing. So to make my wheel move, I have my hand on top, just sort of gently holding it. 
And I'm gonna have the clay meet the tool, not the tool meet the clay. If there's a little bit of extra pieces sticking up, it'll go like until it's even. And then here we go. So ideally your clay should come off in these sort of nifty little strips. And I'm not, notice I'm not doing this. Just like when I throw the pot, I'm waiting for a full rotation. And what I'm doing is, I tend to leave my finger right at the edge so I'm sort of supporting the side of my pot. What I'm doing is I'm going from that first line to where I want my foot to begin. With my wheel going pretty fast, I would say about 75% of the speed that it can go to. The biggest mistake you can make is go too slow when you're trimming. If it's sealed on there really well or you're, and you're holding it on top, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so now I've gone from that first line where I mark my foot to the edge. Now what I wanna do is take my, my very dirty tool, um, the square of my small loop tool. And now I wanna create that right angle and that foot. So with my finger right next to it, I'm gonna hold this like a pencil and I'm gonna go straight down where I made that first mark. slightly different view. There we go. Okay. Uh... straight down. So now you know that the inside of your my pot does not have this sort of right angle in here. So now I'm going to use this part of my tool to round it out. started getting that detail out the small bits maybe I turn this tool sideways get a little bit of a deeper foot now how far do you go well that's about knowing how thick your pot is to begin with you can go by sound always know that down here is going to be a thinner thicker a little echoey there so when you make a foot, you want to make a definitive foot. That's going to be the part, hopefully, that becomes sort of the pedestal of your pot or the safety area of where your glaze is not going to go. It makes it look like you made a conscious decision to keep that part clean. Okay, now I want to go and do the inside of my foot. So I do that with the corner of my squared off side. Sometimes there's almost like a dry layer here and it's hard to kind of dig in if you go straight up and down or straight parallel to the pot. So I'll actually go a little at the end and angle to dig through, kind of work like a jackhammer. And I'll go from right to left. And then I'll go back and go parallel to the wheel head so that I can get a little smoother and a little deeper. So pro tip, how deep does your foot go? Well, if you have enough clay, it should go deep enough so that your foot really looks pronounced. But ideally, if I was to lift this loop of clay off, this should connect right to the inside of this. So the depth of this should line up with this. Now, sometimes when we throw our pots, we're not we're not able to do that because maybe the bottom of our pot is a little too thin. Sometimes I keep a brush near me to sort of brush off a little cacas. Um, one of the things I never do, I never, ever, ever trim the bottom of my foot. When I use my wire tool and I make my pot, I hope that I get that straight enough. I was told by an old teacher of mine that you'll never, ever, ever get this flat. So it's not even worth trying, in theory. 
Now, some people keep a sponge near them when they are trimming. Um, I do not agree with that. So when you use a sponge, you're actually wiping away clay and you're leaving the grog. So the grog is the skeleton within your clay that makes it sort of stand up, um, have a little stability. And when you wipe away the clay, the grog is almost hidden by the wet clay that you created with the sponge. And then when it goes into the kiln, the clay is gonna shrink a little more than the grog. So what actually happens is the complete opposite effect. You end up with a rougher surface because you wiped away clay and the grog actually grows because it doesn't shrink as much. So people often think that, um, that it smooths it out, but it actually does the opposite. So same as when I was throwing my pot, I want to kind of look at the profile. I want to make, turn my head to the side and make sure I'm getting a nice smooth transition. And I want to remember what the inside of my pot was from that photograph in your, you took in your head in the very beginning. And wonder if the outside of my pot looks like what the inside looked at. Now, you could take this off and take a look at the inside, but I promise you, you will never, ever, ever get it back in the same exact position. So you're more or less just gonna have to sort of trust your instincts and just at one point decide that it's a pot and that you've done the best that you can and that you've just got to, as I say, call it a pot gonna go ahead and get a little bit more over here. I try not to trim too much down here. I'm cheating a little bit. Now beginners tend to go through their pots because they get a little over ambitious. So constantly check it. Obviously if you tap down and it pushes down, it's too soft. So I'll go ahead, I'm just gonna clean off the bottom here. And now you wanna figure out what your cool signature is gonna be. How are you gonna sign your pots? I tend to sign my pot when it's upside down. Um, we wanna try not to hold it in our hand. So my 25-year-old uh, signature. <sighs> Stampers are a little more complicated. Um, you need to do them at just the right time. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel these away. I'm gonna crumple them up. I could probably use them for one or two more pots. I'm gonna gently lift my pot and take a look at the bottom. I'm gonna hold it like that. See, there's a decent amount of air underneath there, so it looks like it's lifting off of the table. The inside of my pot, looks like the outside of my pot. My walls are evenly consistent. People ask, can you trim the inside? Um, you can. Do I agree with it? No, I don't. I think that you should just learn how to throw better pots and then you won't have to trim the inside of your pot. So take a look here. As you can see, um, we've got that nice little foot. It's gonna give us enough space to be able to not glaze it or to use a glaze that doesn't run. There's the inside. We've got that sort of smooth transition going on. We've got a nice lip, keeps it pretty sturdy. And now where we signed it with our pen or our pencil, um, it creates a bit of a, of a deeper mark. So it's better than using your pin tool. You'll lose it in, if you use a pin tool. And then we're gonna decide, do we wanna decorate it? Do we wanna hashtag carve the shit out of it? Um, what do we wanna do? Totally up to you. But at this point, you can just let this dry. It's gonna dry completely until we can put it in the kiln and then it gets bisfired. Um, maybe we'll talk about uh, the final product in a week or so. That's it. If you love my videos and you think that they're helpful or you just wanna be annoyed by my voice, please go ahead and subscribe to Mud Girl Pottery videos. Uh, next, I'm going to trim the larger bowl where we trimmed off a little bit less than we did before. Maybe I won't move the camera around so much. Have a great day, bye.